So for my first real tip, I want to show you the thing that really brought me over to Sublime Text 2 instantly, and that was the concept of multiple cursors, which is something I had never been exposed to before. So consider this in your current editor, assuming you're not using Sublime. Let's say right here, this paths variable has changed and you need to update it in each case. So think about it, how would you have done it? Well, let's say the new variable is P. Well, would you have just gone to each one? Well, it's possible that might have been what you would have done, but that takes a long time. Next, you might have simply done something like a search and replace. Now in Sublime, I can hit Command Option F, or you can go to Find Replace. And if you're a Windows user, this would be a different command, of course. And we'll go over the commands shortly. So we can bring that up, and we could look for paths and replace it with P. And that would work, but still, that takes too long. I'll show you a way to use multiple cursors to get this done. If I were to hit Command D, notice that it will instantly select the next occurrence of that sequence. Now, a quick note before we move on, I am using the Mac shortcuts, honestly, because I don't use Windows and I don't have those memorized. And also, you guys don't want to hear me saying lots of commands for every OS. So I'm going to recommend if you are a Windows user, go to sublimetext.com slash docs slash two. And for every feature I'm going to be going over, you can see what your counterpart would be. So in this case, we're going to multiple selection and notice command D for quick add next. On Windows, it would be control D. So often the only difference will be you press control on Windows, I press command on Mac, but sometimes it'll be different. So when in doubt, refer to the documentation. All right, let's continue on. Now I can continue pressing command D and it will select every additional occurrence of that sequence. So you can see how helpful that is. Now, what's coolest here though, is that I now have multiple cursors. Watch what happens if I type new letters. I'm updating that in every single location, which is tremendously powerful. So you can imagine if I needed to change this and I were in an actual project, I would select it and I could press Command D just a handful of times, change it and I'm done. And I did that in two seconds, but we can make this even faster. Before I was selecting the entire word, but you can also just place the cursor within the word. And when I press Command D the first time, that's going to select the word. And that will be like normal selection. So in this case, it's not selecting the dollar sign because it doesn't think that's part of the word. But if I were in, for example, application, Command D, now I've selected the word and I can change it. So that's good for just simple changes. I'm in application, change it to app, Command D. So if I come back to paths, I hit Command D, once again, without selecting it, I can select all of those words and I'm done. Now here's the final thing though. Command D will select the next occurrence of the word. However, Control Command G will select every occurrence of that word. And notice once again, I'm not selecting this word. I'm placing the cursor within it and pressing Control Command G. And now that's instantly selected the word and found every additional occurrence of that word too. And now I hit P. So now rather than the old way when you did search and replace, now I'm simply placing the cursor, control command G, P, and I've updated every occurrence of that variable. Now those are the two core ways that I work with multiple cursors, but you can also do column selection if you prefer that. So if I hold down option on the Mac and I select, you'll see that we are selecting in a column way. And if you're a TextMate user, you're probably familiar with this. So I can come down here, change all of these and update it. And of course, in this case, that wouldn't be effective, but there will be situations when maybe column view is right for you. Now here's another way. So let me just add some gibberish right here. And I'll repeat that a few times. If I want to update these, there's a couple ways. I could, as before, select it, Command D a few times, or select it, Control Command G to select them. Or I can use the cursor, select these, and hit Shift Command L, and think L for lines, L. And now I can update those. So you have Command D, Control Command G, and Control Command L. Now, if that seems difficult to memorize, it's really not. Because it's such a helpful feature, it'll become muscle memory. I don't even think about it at this point. So that does it for this lesson. If you want to play around with it, maybe considering these lines right here, think to yourself, how could I make the T at the beginning of each one of these lines uppercase? Well, let's use a few different methods to knock this one out together. To start, I could put the cursor within one of the words, hit Control Command G, and try to update it. But as you can see here, 
The problem with Control Command G is that it selects every single occurrence of the word. But frequently, as is in this case, we don't want to select every occurrence. We just want to select all of the occurrences within this area. So in that case, that's when Command D is a good choice. Command D a few times and change it to the. Here's the next choice, column selection. So I will hold down Option, and now I'm going to select all of those occurrences and change them to T. And then finally, I could select everything, Control Command L, go to the beginning of the line with Command Left, and now update that. So before I finish off for this lesson, let me show you one last tip. Let's say the cursor is right here, maybe within environments, but you notice, hey, I need to update this to a capital T for the first word. So you could take the mouse, click on it, hit Command D a few times, or another way is to use instant search. So normally with search, you probably hit Control or Command F to bring up that screen, and you would search for it. But then you have to hit Escape to hide the screen, and then you would continue on. And I know these seem like very short actions, but they add up over the course of the day. And the developers who are able to be most fast know how to trim a couple seconds from every single operation that they use. So if I were here, and assuming I didn't have Vintage Mode turned on, I can hit Command-I for incremental search, or go to Find, Incremental Find. So now I type the word, and notice that the next occurrence of it will immediately show up. So then I hit Enter, and I'm already there. Changed. So once again, my cursor is up here. I need to change that, so I would do Command-I, find the next occurrence of the, and then Command-D a few times, and change that to the. And that does it for this lesson. Play around with these multiple cursors and commit those keyboard shortcuts to memory.